Hi everyone, Dave Pounce here with another Illustrator tutorial. This time, what I want to cover is depth of field. There is a fair amount of information on this for Photoshop, but very little for Illustrator. What I mean by depth of field is the area of focus from the foreground to the background. With the deep focus, everything is sharp and clear, no matter how close or far away from the viewer. A more shallow focus makes just one part of the front to back area in sharp focus with the rest being blurry or out of focus. Illustrator is a program that artists tend to use to do deep focus scenes, which is fine, but it's not particularly natural. Here's a technique that I recently came up with to simulate a shallow, more true to life focus. To begin, let's create an oval using the ellipse tool while holding down the shift key to make a perfect circle. Give it a blue fill color, then navigate to Effect, 3D, Extrude, Bevel to access the Extrude and Bevel options. Turn on the preview to see the default settings, which are not deep enough for our purposes. The Extrude depth, measured in points, allows us to lengthen the shape. As I move the slider to the right, you can see that the shape is getting longer. The problem is that with the current settings, these two sides are not going to converge in the distance the way they should with proper perspective. With this slider right here, the amount of perspective distortion can be controlled. For this example, a pretty extreme distortion will work best. Rotating this cube controls the viewing angle of the new object. To really sell the proposition that this shape exists in 3D space, I want this front surface to be in sharp focus while the body of the shape gradually gets out of focus as it goes off into the distance. To make the visual effect more noticeable, it would be helpful to add a surface pattern to the shape. To add the texture, click Map Art, then activate one of the three available surfaces. The front oval, the back oval, and the tube connecting them. The tube shape is the one that we want. Any graphic that's stored in the Symbols palette can be used as a surface covering. I'm using a symbol I created previously. It's not quite big enough, but we do have the option of changing the size to meet our needs. With the preview option turned on, we can see what it'll look like. Now that I think about it, a pattern on the end cap would be a good idea also. Activate that surface, assign the same symbol, adjust the size a bit, and click OK. Before exiting, I'd like the lighting on the object to be more dramatic. Under More Options, use the Ambient Light slider to lessen the overall lightness of the scene, then change the position of the primary light to the upper left. Command-Y on a Mac or Control-Y on a PC switches the view to the wireframe, which doesn't show anything but the oval we started with. This means anything we've done can be changed. Since I'm happy with where this has ended up, I'm moving to the next step. To do this, go to Object, Expand Appearance. The wireframe view now looks like this. Back in Preview, Option, Shift, Drag to make copies. The Option makes the copies, the Shift constrains the direction. The second copy needs to be just an outline of the shape with no pattern or shading. To get this outline, select the shape, then go to the Pathfinder palette, and click the Merge button, then the Unite button, to combine all the separate shapes into one. Option drag to make a copy of this new outline shape. With the outline shape selected and the transparency palette open, notice this thumbnail of the shape next to the button labeled Make Mask. If you're familiar with layer masks in Photoshop, you know the basic principle here. Black hides completely, white reveals completely, and shades of gray represent various levels of transparency. Before making the shape into a mask, give it a linear gradient fill color. Because the entire front surface of the tube shape should be in sharp focus, the gradient needs to be adjusted so that area is solid black. Slide the black color well indicator to the left to increase the percentage of solid black. Adjust the gradient midpoint indicator to the right to emphasize the white side of the gradient a little more. The second shape should have the exact same linear gradient, but with the black and white sides reversed. Option drag to make a copy, then select the black slider. 
Notice the palette indicates the exact position of the slider. Using that number as a guide, drag the black slider to the left and the white slider to the position previously occupied by the black slider. This shape will be the sharp focus. This shape will be the blurred focus. Before that happens, get rid of the extra hidden pattern shapes. It's good practice to do this because even though they're not visible, Illustrator is still accounting for them when navigating around the work area. Select the object, then hit the Merge button from the Pathfinder palette to solve the problem. With one of the pattern shapes selected, go to Blur, Gaussian Blur. The higher the number, the more the blur. Right around 6 should work nicely. Select the shape with the mostly black gradient and drag it over to the blurry shape. Since the copies were made by dragging with the Shift key, holding down the Shift key while moving the shape makes it easier to line them up. Switch to the wireframe and zoom in to make the two shapes align exactly. For this technique to work, the gradient needs to be on top, so while it's still selected, Object, Arrange, Bring to Front. Select both shapes, go to the Transparency palette, and click Make Mask. Unfortunately, the result indicates that the solid black portion of the gradient was not quite wide enough to cover the front of the 3D object. Command or Control Z to undo the mask, then hit Command or Control 3 to temporarily hide the gradient shape. Hit Command Control R to show the rulers, then drag out a ruler guide to indicate the left edge of the front shape. Object, Show All to unhide the gradient shape, then use the gradient palette to make the black part of the gradient wider. Note where the position of the black slider is so that the white slider on the other gradient shape can be adjusted to match. Select the two shapes again and remake the mask. Select the second gradient shape and click on the white slider in the gradient palette to make it active. Type in the position number of the black slider from the first gradient so that the white and black solids of each of the gradients are the same width. Once again, hold down the Shift key and move the gradient shape onto the second 3D object. Go to the wireframe and zoom in to align the two shapes exactly. Select them both, go to Transparency, Make Mask. Notice everything is still in sharp focus, but the object itself is gradually fading out. Select the blurred shape, switch to the wireframe, and align the two shapes. The left and right arrow keys can be used to nudge the shape into its final position. Here's the result. Nice sharp focus in the front, gradually less sharp as the shape recedes into the distance. The 3D shapes are now in an environment with an appropriate horizon line. Note along the tube that the transparency techniques used to achieve the depth of field blur are allowing some of the background to show through. This extra outline shape I made earlier will solve the problem if it's filled with white and placed between the 3D objects in the background. Now it looks better. Now let's take the concepts we've been discussing and give them a slightly different twist. Create a circle while holding down the shift key, then fill the circle with a pattern. For a number of reasons, this shape doesn't look three-dimensional. Option drag to make a copy. Fill the copy with a gradient. Change the gradient to radial. Use the gradient tool to adjust the positions of the black and white blend points. Bring the shape to the front. Position it over the top of the pattern filled shape. And finally, change the blend mode to multiply. The shape now looks more dimensional, but there are still several problems. First, the shapes around the edges should be smaller as they curve around because they're farther away. And second, they should also be a little bit out of focus. Let's address the pattern size issue to begin with. First, go to Object, Expand Appearance to get the pattern in a form that will allow us to distort it. Next, access the Bloat tool located under the Width tool in the Tool palette and double click on it to adjust its properties. The tool size should be at least as big as the pattern shape. Also lower the intensity to about 15%. Position the tool right in the middle of the pattern shape 
and click while holding down the mouse for just a moment. The result is a bit too distorted, so double click on the tool again and lower the intensity to 5%. Click on the shape again to distort the pattern and maybe once again for just the right amount of distortion. Notice the bloat tool also made the shape a little larger. Here's an easy way to match the size of an already existing circle. Drag out a horizontal ruler guide to the very top of the circle, then drag out a vertical ruler guide to the left edge of the circle. With the oval tool selected, start to drag out a circle at the intersection of the two ruler guides while holding down the shift key. Using the eyedropper tool, sample the color properties of the now too small original shading circle, then adjust the black and white position points with the blend tool. Option drag to make a copy of the pattern shape and two copies of the gradient shape. Adjust one of the gradient shapes so that it is white in the middle and black on the edges using the gradient palette. A bigger white area in the middle will work better, so drag the white slider to the right to enlarge it. Copy the finished blend and use the gradient palette to reverse the white and black blend points using the same technique as when we did this earlier for the tube shape. Select a pattern shape and assign a Gaussian blur of about 9 or so. Select the gradient with the white center and drag it over near the sharp focus pattern shape. Select both shapes and use the align feature to center the two objects on each other both horizontally and vertically to line them up perfectly. Do the same thing with the blurred pattern shape and the gradient with the black center. Make sure both of the gradient shapes are on top then select each set of shapes in turn, go to the transparency panel and click make mask. Now select both of the masked shapes and once again use the alignment tool to get all the shapes in sync. Select the gradient shading object, make sure it's on the top of the stacking order and again use the alignment tool, don't you just love how easy it makes this, to orient all the shapes into perfect order. The result is sharp focus on the part of the sphere closest to the viewer and a softer focus as the surface curves away. The pattern used to fill up the original circle shape had a transparent background, so in order to give the sphere some color, option alt drag to make a copy of the shading circle and fill it with a solid color. Send the shape to the back and once again make use of the alignment tool. By the way, check to make sure the blend mode is set to normal. With the background added, this is the final result. As far as I know, this isn't a technique that's been published before, so if you use it in your projects, you could be doing some cutting edge illustrator work. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section. See you next tutorial.